I recently saw a report in the Columbia newspaper, which is uh, our biggest paper of record, that showed that Clark County, the fifth largest county in Washington state, is being shorted vaccines by the state, um, which explains a baffling low uh, ba vaccine administration rate in Clark. More specifically, Clark County has received 94 doses per thousand people, whereas like Spokane, uh, county has received 145 doses per thousand. Snohomish has received 121 doses per thousand. Pierce has received 111 doses uh, per thousand. And King has received 132 doses per thousand. And according to public health data uh, analysis of the five counties with the highest, lowest, and medium population sizes, Clark ranks 14th out of 15 counties for first dose allocations. And honestly, I, this is just unacceptable. It's absolutely unacceptable and clearly shows that the current allocation metrics that public health is using are not creating equity, but instead causing Clark County to have this weird lottery like system for people who are eligible. I hear all these people talking about what we're going to do to convince people to take vaccines. And I'm like, wait, 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 I got eligible people in 1A population who cannot get their vaccine. We've heard repeatedly that this is a supply issue, but given this revelation, I think it points to a systemic issue and how the state chooses to allocate the vaccine. And I need to know what your department is doing to rectify this error and why Clark is being shorted vaccines compared to the other four largest counties. I similarly want uh, to put Lewis County on your radar for the same exact reasons. Um, they, they are the, the older population is not receiving an adequate amount of vaccine. Lewis is in the last place for vaccine distribution, but has the highest population of elderly residents at 21%. And all my counties are on I-5. We're in distribution corridors. Um, I just wanted to see if you could speak to that. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Herrera, uh, Dr. Uh, hey. Congress Herrera Butler. Uh, it's great to great to uh, see you uh, by by camera, and I hope to to be able to see you in person uh, mm -hmm. soon. So thank you for your leadership, and thank you for that question. And you know, the the the, the reality is that we um, January third we were at twenty nine percent. Uh, of every uh, vaccine that was coming into the state that was being administered. Uh, we're now uh, well over 85, actually we're at 90 plus percent right now, although it's, uh, some of that is impacted by the weather. So it's gonna, it's gonna probably be dancing between that 80, 85, 90% for, uh, for uh, the, the next uh, several days to week. Um, this is uh, absolutely, I'm, I'm, I've seen that article and I will say that we had already been reaching out to the jurisdictions where we had seen decreases or not as much of the supply uh, even prior to this. Uh, this was actually over the weekend. Uh, and Lewis County was one of those. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Uh, what what one of the, the real uh, challenges has been uh, that, you know, as we were starting with 1A, we were going with hospitals and healthcare systems, and then we were pivoting to uh, those jurisdictions and, and obviously with community providers and pharmacies, et cetera, uh, looking at a number of factors, including the pro rata in terms of what was going into those counties and data from the providers who were actually asking for the vaccine, the populations that they were willing and able to vaccinate, which included the, the equity piece that, that you had referred to, and then information on really their, their throughput and their ability to, to vaccinate. The, the, the reality is that when you, when you take all that together, it, it is absolutely imperfect when it comes to jurisdictions. And so what we're now doing is going back to the ones that have the most the, the, the gap, if you will, and trying to figure out what we can do. The other piece is that we, we had more Pfizer vaccine. So it said, okay, well, let's let's move Pfizer vaccine there. And then some of the providers said, well, we don't have the capability because of the, the storage requirements with the Pfizer vaccine. So there are a lot of these factors that are not excuses, by the way, but explanations. But what we need to do is, is continue to do a better job of working with the local health jurisdiction. And because I've been at that local level for 17 years, I tell you that it is something that is key for me. But right now we've got a lot of these moving pieces that, that need to be addressed as we, we work with our local partners.